Hey, Dom. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you, Mike? Good. Very good. Uh, excellent. Bit of excellent. Yeah. I'm a little exhausted. I, like, I got to tell you, this holiday season <laughs> just kills me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Most people are like overjoyed for the holidays. This this time of year exhausts me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you had you had guests too, which I mean, I, I just had you know my nephew Mike, but I, but um, he he came by. But um, yeah, we we had a a twofer on uh, Thanksgiving where we had you know our invited guests for Thanksgiving proper, right? And then um, one of the uh, people of a couple we're friends with is a nurse. And okay. she didn't get off shift until like nine Thanksgiving evening. I yeah, yeah. Nurses have it tough. I mean, any, anybody in the medical field. But I mean, hey, uh, my sister Anna, she's oh know, yeah, she's oh a, yeah, definitely. But and she's but yeah, starting, I've so. already started looking for gifts. We've yeah. already got a tree. <laughs> oh wow, wow. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, uh, like. I've always had this thing about holidays because it's like they all kind of like everybody's rushing into the holidays from Halloween on. And it's like, let Thanksgiving go and then start Christmas. But it's kind of you don't have that much time from the time Thanksgiving ends. Christmas is right. It's only oh, yeah. away. So um, you kind of do have to prepare. But um, and it, pretty much everybody I know has started decorating. <laughs> so but, so yeah. speaking of that, we got to decide to do what to do for Christmas when we get as we're approaching that time. Yeah. But, but for now, let's stick to the movie we're talking right. about today. And and behind me is a is a poster. And what's the movie, Dom? The movie is The Endless, the 20, what is it? 2017. Okay. Uh movie by Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead. Right. And I got to say, that's the movie. Yeah. But you can't talk about this movie without actually kind of just focusing on the Benson Moorhead, like, yeah, like, dynamic director duo. Yeah. Um, well, because they're just a force to be dealt with. Well, let me tell you, I I had a, like kind of a, it was almost like a weird, like a dreamy, like deja vu kind of weird thing happened watching this movie because this is your baby. I've never seen it. Uh -huh. um, and I, I watched the movie and the scene at the cabin where he where he or that little house, it's like, like a little mobile home or something. When mm -hmm. he comes up on that house um, and then when he ends inside and <laughs> ends up inside and the guy is handcuffed to the rail, I started having this weird thing of like, I, I this is weird. I've seen like I, I didn't know it was something I dreamed, something I saw. It was just this weird moment of like, why do I, why does this whole scene seem familiar? It turned out I had seen one of their previous movies. Yeah. So that's from their first movie. Yes. The 2012 resolution. Yes. And that's the one I saw, but, but uh, let's get back to you, you go, you introducing this one. Uh, okay. So, so I don't feel bad introducing this at all. Like, like things like the shiny and jaws if you haven't seen it i don't know yeah but uh but this movie i'm i'm surprised if someone says they have seen this movie yeah yeah um so the movie follows two brothers yeah who are living in a crappy apartment in LA they're barely getting by they're barely keeping food on the table yeah yeah um and and they're in that predicament because during their childhood, they were raised in what they describe as a UFO suicide cult out in the desert. And I never really got the UFO thing <laughs> because it was, it was, that's not what the, it was more of a monster, but, but go ahead. No, it, it's sort of, um, it's sort of suggested at one point in the movie that, well, they were in a culty situation. Right. Um, that line of the UFO UFO death cult is more of what the media fed them as kids. Yeah, yeah. So they could say that and make headlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's sold papers or stories. Yeah. But but that being said, you know, I guess they had a brief flash of fame, but homeschooling, no degrees, no job training. Right. So while they're 
you know, they're out of there. They're sort of not in a great place. No, 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 and, not financially and not with their personal lives. <laughs> but but the two brothers have very different views. Like one of the brother, one of the brothers is firmly of the mind that they were all going to commit suicide and by escaping, they escaped certain death. Yeah. And, and so no mm. matter how bad his life is, <clears throat> he's still alive. And so and there's a real brother dynamic. There's the older brother, yeah. younger brother thing that's you know the younger brother wanting to find his feet and but go ahead and so the younger brother he has fond memories yeah of his life in this group they were well fed clothed well loved um he misses it and so when this mysterious video cassette tape shows up at their doorstep anna yeah from from that cult She's a babe by the way <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Um, one, the younger brother convinces the other, let's just go by for a, a brief visit. Yeah. And so they go out and craziness ensues. J just weirdness. And that's one of, this is what really made me fall. In, there's actually many things that made me fall in love with this movie. Yeah. If, if someone is going to take my recommendation and watch this, this is not an Oscar award-winning blockbuster change your life film. But well, when, I, when I started watching this, I thought to myself, this is, this really is a Dom movie. And, yeah. and I, um, when I first started watching it, I wasn't sure like where it was going to go or whether I was going to like it. Um, Cause it seemed a little slow at the start, mm -hmm. but once it started cooking, I was like, this is a cool movie, but keep going. So, so um, anyone that knows me, which is probably mo not many of the people watching this channel, uh, knows that I love the writer Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft yeah. oh, is yeah. one of my yeah. favorite authors. And therefore, when I watch movies, I'm always on the lookout for a movie that can be described as Lovecraftian. Yeah. And many people attempt this. Almost no one gets it right. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's a really hard thing to like you capture in well, in any media, and and movies is among them. Yeah, yeah, so, Love was such a talented writer, but um, he's not always easy to put down on. You know, no, no, I, I I still say very few people have done it. Yeah, um, but these guys. These guys manage it. They they yeah. manage to give you the feeling that you're in a different dimension. Yeah. When you're in that area, it's trippy. It's the movie's very trippy. It's um, some of the stuff, and I love the. I don't think I could handle three moons in <laughs> in real life. One moon is can seems to affect people sometimes really crazy. Uh, three three would probably cause chaos, uh, but. Um, but yeah, that that whole thing with seeing the two moons in the sky and then the third coming, you know. But but yeah, <sighs> and, and that so and, and that leads me right in to the second thing that makes me love this film, and that's how they did this all on a really tight budget. Yeah, yeah. Like I I couldn't get a um, I couldn't find an actual dollar amount. Yeah, but but just by looking at they had a tight budget to work yeah with. it couldn't have been much it could not have been much but i'll tell you what it's one of the things and i understand like when you start getting like bigger stars in a movie these were all pretty much unknowns i i didn't i didn't know any of these people before i started watching this but um but i mean um when you start getting known stars then that's where a lot of your budget goes right there but um but yeah, I I also wonder sometimes like where's the money going on some of these films, <laughs> because when you're talking you know multi million dollar films, many multi million dollar films, it's like, come on, you can make a money a movie for less money than that, you know. But <laughs> but yeah, they they made a pretty good movie for I I can't imagine it was a whole lot of money. But well, well, one of the ways they did that was that so so uh, Benson and Moorhead. The two directors, 
Also, the two brothers that starred in the the movie. Yeah. Also, some of the editors. Also, some of the cameramen. Yeah. Like they wore so many hats to get this movie made. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. They called relatives in to be cast members. Um, and and they created sense of feeling of unease with just the simplest of editing tricks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you think about it, there wasn't like a whole lot of, they didn't have like crazy makeup or CGI or, or anything like that. It was, a lot of the stuff was very subtle use of camera work and they did a mm -hmm. great job with it. So yeah. Those weird looking statues that would just appear. You know, the other, like I, that was one of the things that I really totally never got. They were like, when they're at the, um, when they're at the uh, mother's um, when they're at the mother's uh, grave there and uh, they're looking at the, and there's, you know, they're looking around and uh, you know, all of a sudden like they're, they start like one of them starts pointing out like the, I don't think there's one in this particular scene, but there those weird little, there is one in that scene. It's just not in that shot. Yeah. And he says like, uh, he goes like, what are those? And it's, he's like, I, it's, it's like probably caused by erosion and i'm thinking so that's supposed to be a rock like what what was that you know but um and that that's another thing with this movie is the the mother's death was also an odd thing because apparently they were found in a uh or by a burning car so what was that about but oh well, there's all sorts of theories so yeah. so and, and again the the channel is called spoiler alert yeah, I'm going to give away the entire movie. So, oh, yeah. yeah, so yeah. if you, if you want to see it, see it before you see the rest of the video. Yeah, yeah. But um, but I don't think what I'm going to say takes anything away from it. Right. The whole thing is a time bubble. Yeah. You know, people are trapped within that bubble. They they, they can't get out. Leave. Yeah, loop. So when these brothers are making their escape and getting out. A number of viewers said there's another car coming in the opposite direction. And what it is, is that they caused their own accident. They are the car that crashed into the car, the, the car their mother was driving. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And so, um, and they say that the fans of that theory say that that's just an indication that the brothers themselves are are trapped in this loop, right? I um, see. I, I wasn't. I mean that that's a plausible thing. I wasn't really when I saw the car. I was almost thinking like that's them. It's like the they couldn't get out, and the car was like coming at them, right? But who knows? Uh, yeah, that's that's yeah, a great yeah. theory, but that would be terrible. They killed their own mother. <laughs> I, unfortunately. Um, Benson and Moorhead have announced publicly that it's a happy ending. They took away any mystery <laughs> right. from it, which, uh, I mean, it's their baby. So, uh, you know, so it's did, did they get out? Because I, I was assuming they did. According to the movie makers, yes. Yeah, because that, that's what I thought. That's the way I interpreted it was, uh, was they actually had managed to blow through and, and got out. I mean, it looked like it to me, <laughs> the way it ended. So, like, that's a happy ending to me. Uh, they both decided, like, yeah, let's get the hell out of here. So, and, and the other thing is they kind of, their relationship evolved. The The older brother decided to step back and stop, like, trying to, like, run their lives. And the younger brother was actually, you know, feeling good about himself when he left. So, uh, and, and yeah. th again, that's just one more thing that impresses me is that, these two are directors. They're not officially actors. Yeah. And yeah. Yet they did a great job with those. Yeah, ones. absolutely. No, believe me, I there were so many things that I did like about the movie. And like I said, I wasn't totally sure that I was I was going to, but uh, but it didn't take too long into the movie. And I was like, damn, this is a good this is a good movie. You know, it's yeah, uh, I, I really honestly well do not know where I found it. Yeah, but, but this is pandemic viewing. It oh was, yeah, it was, yeah. It was during yeah. the pandemic, and I'm just 
looking for anything and everything I can watch. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll check this out. Wow. Yeah. I was just instantly uh, blown away. Well, and that's what happened with their first movie that I saw was um, what, Resolution. Because mm -hmm. um, that one there, I, I I don't know if it was on Tubi or what, what it was that I saw that on, but I just happened to stumble on it. And it, I see so many movies. <laughs> that like sometimes I'll watch a movie and I'll think that's a good movie. And it just goes right out of my head, like the title or something like that, because, you know, I, I see so many and I had forgotten like the, the name, what, what the movie was, whatever. And when I saw this movie and I had that scene, I was like, Oh my God, like, why am I, why is this so familiar? It's like deja vu, you know, but yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and for anyone interested, see resolution. Yeah. Yeah. It was the, it was their first movie that I do have a number figure for. They made that on a budget of three thousand dollars. Good God, nobody makes a movie for that. Exactly, yeah. and so again, you know, it's not like yeah, you know, it's not the greatest. I'm not saying it's going to be the all time greatest. It's not bad, but you can watch it for free. I think it's on YouTube. I know it's on Tubi. I think it's, it's also on just on YouTube for free. Yeah, yeah, because I ended up rewatching. Um, because I saw this and I was like, damn, I, I, you know, now I know I've seen, and I ended up going back and watching that again. And, uh, and it really helped to tie everything together. But um, yeah, I, I liked it as much or more uh, the second time through. So like I said, I, I think it's a, you can tell it's budget. I mean, anybody that's can't stand a budget movie, don't watch it. But if you want a movie that's, a, a but I, I've seen movie. I've seen low budget movies that were horrible. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> and, and this is at the at least watchable. Yeah, there are hours of my life that I will never get back on on certain <laughs> certain movies. But at the same time, I'm somebody that's I don't know about you, but I'm willing to take a chance. Oh on yeah, a movie and even even a movie that starts out looking bad, um, and. Um, there is a movie talking about Christmas movies. There's a movie which I'm not going to get into now, but one I would like us to watch, and mm -hmm. and you know we could be doing it for the next one. Who knows? But um, I'll I'll talk to you more about that. We'll plan. But we, we have to, we definitely have to plan. When but I first started watching that one, I thought this is an awful movie, and I really loved it. But back to the endless. This is not a bad time to segue into a question I've been meaning to ask you. Sure. What what movie sites do you use to determine how good a movie is before you see it? What movies? Oh, um, so, I, so like so like like I, I'm on Tubi all the time, yeah. and it's got an incredible melange of movies. It's yeah. like, like it's got some great classics. The thing is on there. Oh yeah. Um, and it's got some oh huge stinkers. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. But but what I do is like, uh, if I'm curious, I'll go on to IMDb. Yeah. And see how many stars it's gotten. See, I, I don't I actually I actually don't put that much effort in, mm. <laughs> into my movie watching. Um, there are movies that either somebody recommends to me. Uh, oftentimes, Alicia uh, will recommend a movie and, and I always feel like she's really she's such a she's she's such a great uh movie fan and and movie buff that um and she knows me if she says to me uncle mike you're gonna love this movie i know uh i'm gonna like the movie all right about 99 i think probably mm -hmm. one or two times she's been wrong where i thought eh, i didn't like that most every time she nails a good, great movie and she tells me hey this one's scary this one's really good, whatever. I, I, I can trust her judgment. Yeah. So as far as, as far as like how I find movies, a lot of times it's just looking around, it's hearing stuff. It's like, you know, checking out trailers, but I do a lot of surfing. I go to Tubi, I go to, you know, I'll be looking on Voodoo, just different sites that, that I stream on or Netflix or whatever. And I just, I'll be reading description. I'll think that, that sounds good. And I, you know, I might watch the trailer, but I usually don't do a whole lot of research. I just jump in. And if it's really starts looking bad, then maybe I might say, I'm either going to stop or I'll check it out another time. But yeah, that's, 
there's not a whole lot of thought <laughs> other than okay, the fact that, okay. that this looks good, you know. Yeah, I, I've noticed that that the majority of people I read yeah. that write about movies, right, their go-to is Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, you well, I love their reviews. Mm -hmm. See, I'm mm -hmm. more apt to I'm more apt to like um if it's something I'm gonna maybe buy that I've never seen because I'll go on Voodoo. I I buy a lot of movies if, if i don't buy them on disc i buy the movie so sometimes i'll see a movie and i'll think wow it kind of looks good and if i'm thinking of buying it like a movie on sale five buck five dollar sale movie i that's when i might start reading down through the rotten tomatoes reviews to see what like more professional reviewers um because i don't trust the <laughs> reviews left by you know on on say the voodoo readers um, I'm sorry, but I don't try. It's it's it, if it's a soccer mom putting the review in, she's probably wrong. <laughs> so so that's the reason I'm going to go to a professional reviewer. And even then, um, I don't base my my opinion entirely on a review uh, because the reviewers are often wrong. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I I've just gotten annoyed by IMDb because not only is it owned by Amazon. Yeah, it's yeah. so integrated into the the film studio structure right. that I've gone on to research a film, and the film will get like you know eight out of ten stars. Yeah, and it'll yeah. be horrible. Right, and you'll start reading the reviews, and you can quickly tell that over half the reviews are people that worked on the film. Oh yeah, yeah. And so yeah. Um, I'm trying to switch over to TMDB. Yeah, the movie database that okay, is like yeah. this industry involved. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I um, I I really can't go too far into like this. It, like I said, I will check reviews, but I do not um, I do not let reviews totally in. You know, if that's what's gonna, if that's what's gonna make me see a movie or not see a movie, I'm probably making a mistake because uh, reviewers even fans sometimes uh they'll mislead you so um I, i'd rather if, if it looks interesting to me i'd rather waste some time if i you know um and to tell you the truth if it draws me in i end up watching the whole damn thing and i think that sucked um it probably was better than what it would have been if i if, if i start watching a movie and it loses me after i try not to just dump out after 10 minutes because you never know it could turn a corner Sometimes the movie starts off awful, but Some, sometimes you can tell in 10 minutes. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Believe me. But, but, uh, but sometimes a half hour in you're like, okay, this isn't getting any better. And, and then I will dump out. Um, but if it holds me till the end, then I think, well, there, <laughs> it was bad <laughs> and I'm not, I'm probably not going to ever watch this again, but it was halfway entertaining. If if uh, if it brought, let me go all the way to the end, it was like yeah, it had something, you know. So and I've really? been wrong before on movies. I where I I watched a movie and I was thinking I'm not liking this movie, and by the time it wrapped up and I had a chance to think about it and what it caused for reactions, sometimes I actually changed my opinion. I Funny Games was a a good example. Uh, again, that was an Alicia recommendation. And I thought this is a horrible movie. I, I'm talking about the original German version. Mm -hmm. um, it was, I thought this is a horrible movie. There's no redeeming value here. It actually was so unsettling to me. And the more I thought about it after a few days, I was like, you know, I actually, it, it did draw something from me. I did end up watching the American version, which to me, it was just a repeat of the German one and the German one did it better. So, but anyway, yeah. Yeah, we we may have to do an episode of this where we talk about the worst movies we've seen. Oh, absolutely! I would love I would love to do that. I would absolutely love to do that. Um, I've got the fishing picture up, and um, that was one of the things talking about a cool use or of the camera work rather than they like a bigger budget movie would have had a whole bunch of CGI and crazy mm -hmm. shit down there uh at, at the bottom and when he got down there and this one really it was just he comes up and he's like oh my god like there was something down there and it was 
you didn't really see anything and it still was it was pretty crazy you know it made you feel like wow you know there's something bad there you know well, so, well also you know i thought it was really smart of them to make this entity whatever you yeah. want to call it a god yeah. whatever yeah. um to make this entity have to communicate the only way it can make humans understand is through media right to right. talk right. through pictures and film i thought that was pretty darn cool uh, it was and actually that is something that you see there is a you really kind of do need to see both movies uh in order to see it this definitely movie. helps um, it, it definitely expands your understanding yeah I mean, I could have, I could have watched this if I had never seen the first one. I could have watched this, and um, and I would have been perfectly fine with this being a really good movie, a really good movie. And um, but the fact that like I started like tripping and saying like, "Holy crap, I've seen, I, I've seen something before with, with this movie." Um, but yes, the media was, and it was in the first one. It's brilliant the way they, because it's scary too. There's a, a real element. It's a it's a basic story, you know. He, the guy comes to rescue his friend who's high on meth. And he's trying to get him off of it, um, and he's got him chained up in the house. And um, then he finds this whole video thing, and he starts he's watching movies, and it's it's creepy as hell. Like there, it's yeah, being, you know, it's being filmed inside their house. It's scenes of them, and and they're both accusing each other. Like, how'd you do that? <laughs> you know, but but well, I mean, what they were seeing was literally impossible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way. And that's what they kind of figured out eventually because they first started saying like, you had to do like that. How did you do that or something? And then it's like, there's no way that could have been, been filmed like that. So yeah, let me, yeah, uh, let me give you this one quote. This is from sure. Matt Zoller sites of Roger Ebert.com. Okay. And his, his quote is, if you have a good idea, a strong cast, a smart script, and directorial chops. You don't need a lot of money to make a compelling movie. Yeah. The endless yeah. is proof. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Hollywood could learn something from those two guys. They really could. Um, because they're doing movies uh, in a really interesting way. And they are doing it for lower bucks. And it's not that you couldn't throw a few more dollars at them and, and make it a little bit better. But at the same time, I've seen way too many directors. Harmony Corinne is a, a good example of that. He, I like Spring Breakers, and he has evolved as a as a human being. For one thing, I think it's probably less drugs running his life. For one thing, because <laughs> if you ever want to see some interesting interviews, watch the old David Letterman ones with when he used to go on there. Uh, <laughs> He was one strange dude, which is why his movies are so cool. But but um, Har Harmony Corinne's movies in the early days, I, Gummo and and uh, Julian Donkey Boy, mm -hmm. those are strange movies filmed on a really low budget, and they're better than Spring Breakers. I mean, Spring Breakers is fun. I enjoy it. I own it. But um, but what really comes through with directors like that is that they love making movies. Yeah. I yeah. was listening to interviews with these two, with uh, Benson and Moorhead. Yeah. And they were talking about how they'd just start talking and say, oh, that's a great idea. And they'd get a camera and just start filming. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and that right there, uh, th uh, that makes me want to love them more because of the fact that they love filmmaking that much that they are inspiring, you know, each other and themselves mm -hmm. just by, you know, just by their their talk and their love of, of making a movie, you know? So that's the way all filmmakers should be. Ben, uh, Benson, the, um, the guy that played the uh, younger brother, I believe yeah. he dodged a bullet. He, no, no, it was the older brother. <sighs> yeah. It was, the, it was the older brother in the endless. Okay. He was about to go to medical school. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He said he'd take the, the MCAT. He had, he had his applications in yeah. and he was, fully planning on going to med school in a year. Yeah. And he said, you know, what the hell? I'm going to take this year and I'm going to throw myself into any internship, into yeah. any movie making thing I can find. Yeah. And he, he met Moorhead and the rest is history. 
Yeah. Well, as much as we need doctors and nurses and, you know, nurse practitioners and all that, uh, as much as we need that, um, we also need good filmmakers. <laughs> so now, now let me bring up an unfortunate aspect. Yeah. About the budget. Okay. Love their first film resolution, shoestring yeah. budget. Liked their second film, Spring, a little slower. Uh, that De I haven't seen. Yep. Definitely the most romantic monster movie I've ever seen. <laughs> that makes uh, me. <laughs> it, it's, it's worth a watch. Um, right. And then, as you hear me talking here, I, I absolutely love The Endless. But then they actually got a budget. Okay. And they came out with Synchronic. Okay. And guys, I really wanted to love Synchronic. Really? I really wanted okay. to love it. And it just, yeah, it did not hit. Did not hit like these movies. Okay. So sp Spring, is is Spring tied in with these other two? They It is, but very loosely. Okay. They've said that, that Resolution Spring, The Endless, and Synchronic all take place in the same universe. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. and there are like like the um, the connection between resolution and the endless is is obvious, right? The others are like just little statements dropped here and there. Yeah, yeah. Um. So what the last one is what synchronic? Synchronic. Okay. Um, I, um, I I saw it on Netflix. I don't know if it's still on Netflix. Yeah. It's got um. Oh, the biggest name I know has got Anthony Mackie. Okay. Is, um, is, is, is Synchronic tied in with the uh, the first two? So, so the... Synchronic is about, um, I think one guy's an EMT, and I don't know if the other guy is actual law enforcement or, or just a security guard. Yeah. But they start encountering this new street drug called Synchronic that allows the users to experience all time at once. Well, well, they're really, they're, they really have a whole thing with, uh, with time and, Oh yeah. And, and time loops and things like that too. So that's cool. But, but the one connection is that the drug is supposed to come from a red flower. That's which is in all the cult out in the desert. Yeah. Which is also tied in with these two because that red flower is uh is heavily in this one here and mm -hmm. it's also in the first one resolution so uh yeah uh that's uh that's and that's another thing with the with that first one that weird german guy in the desert on uh, the trailer you know yeah. the mm -hmm. dog ends up getting killed and he goes to the trailer that's a whole but i don't want to get into that but that's a whole weird scene i just it just so, suddenly hit me, but that was a so weird. I'm going to call your attention to two, uh, two of the characters in the Embus. One is Smiling Dave. They, he he weirded me out. <laughs> he really weirded me out. <laughs> he didn't have much screen time, but all man. yeah, all he did was. <laughs> <laughs> it was like wow, dude. <laughs> and, and then, I try to I try to keep my, my language safe i don't like using profanity on this on this uh video. oh yeah no, i know i am the but worst shitty one. carl you're <laughs> oh yeah yeah shitty yeah. carl is the other character and, and believe me i'm not saying that just to say the word yeah that's his name right. <laughs> in the credits yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but they were thinking about giving both of those characters their own movies oh wow really wow. they thought they thought they had enough background enough story to like flesh out their like hey, how they got there if 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 they uh if they could pull it off the way the, like i said the that very first one resolution and and this one uh i i'm i'm all on board with these two I, like i said i haven't seen the very last one but maybe um maybe they need less of a budget <laughs> but well, yeah I, they've I got disney it. dollars now yeah jeez yeah they did um well that's bad <laughs> they, they did moon Knight, which yeah. i love moon Knight. disney can't seem to get out of their own way as far as making good movies anymore so <clears throat> um no i thought moon Knight was great i thought they did a fantastic job on that yeah, yeah. they did season two of loki which wasn't bad it was okay. a little convoluted 
Yeah. Um, uh, and then they're going to be doing Daredevil Born Again, which I'm very excited for. Who knows yeah. how it's going to be, but I loved I loved the Netflix Daredevil series that they had. Oh yeah. Oh my God, that was good. I was so disappointed that that didn't go further, but it's uh, going to be tough to beat that. Yeah. Yeah. That was so good. Great cast. Just, you know, every, the, the dude that was playing daredevil, he was great. I mean, it was just a great, great series. Charlie. Ah, it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't remember it now. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, anyway, it was a, all I can say a great, great uh, series. And, um, yeah, I, I just wish that it continued. There were a couple of, I have to say, Netflix has done a good, good job of pulling off series. The only thing is they they seem to drop the series. They'll, they'll have something really good going on, and then it's like, where's the rest of it? <laughs> it's like, why'd you stop, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know who's in control of their programming because yeah. I, I got to say, and don't get me wrong, I'm fully in Netflix corner. I've watched them numerous times a week yeah. yeah but but their movies are really bad yeah like well, like um what was it red notice with yeah. uh with the rock gal godot and um ryan reynolds yeah and Great i like ryan out. reynolds I, he cracks me up yeah, yeah horrible movie yeah really or at least i haven't or, seen it but it, kind of fun but like uh yeah i, and, I haven't seen that one but They've got this habit of putting these movies out that are like their cast has star power, but it's like yeah. they blow all their budget on the cast. Yeah. And then the movie itself is just not that great. I've seen a few uh, Netflix ones that I believe were Netflix original that I thought were well done. Um, however, um, I do think that they're probably their forte has been more towards series. I, I think they do yes. a better job with series. Um, yes. And, I did like Extraction. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did like their Glass Onion movie. I uh, I don't think I saw a Glass Onion. That movie. was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Oh, well. But, um, but yeah, um, again, this one here, this one here, dude, this really did surprise me. And um, I, I, was really pleased by it so um i i think it's you know um uh, now see there there's one of those weird things in the yep. background there just over my my shoulder there in front of the dude there um but yeah i was like when they started talking about them they it, it he's when he said erosion i was thinking well are they rocks <laughs> you know that have that like wind has and like what kind of wind <laughs> Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, you like take one look those. at it. You're like, you know, that's not erosion. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it's not erosion. It's <laughs> I don't know what it. It looks like some. It looks like a tree limb that, like, somebody from a weird, you know, twisted tree that somebody stuck in the ground, which is probably closer to what it is. But um, but yeah, like I said, uh, great movie with a with a you know terrific premise, and um, and I, I, like I said, they they used. They use primitive effects that really worked, and um, and I, the character just the way. Now that when the when the main characters disappeared, that was probably the closest thing to like the UFO thing. Like what it, what happened? They were all like sucked up by. It. But it was I still wasn't buying a UFO. To me, it was more like they they went into some kind of weird like you know time oh, yeah, time I, I thing mean... or dimension or. You know, yeah, that's almost the definition of Lovecraftian, though. Yeah, it's that uh, it's so beyond human comprehension. Yeah, like how are you going to describe it? Right. Speaking of Lovecraft, um, another movie for the future that I would like to talk about um, down the road is mm -hmm. uh, the Shuttered Room, the original Shuttered Room. Carolyn Lee, um, uh, oh shoot, uh, Oliver Reed. Just it's it's a good cast, and um, I would it's maybe not the Lovecraft that you prefer, but I think it's still it's got some cool things going on in it. No, I'm I'm I, down for it, and it's what, a vintage one. So what excites me about doing these videos, yeah, is 
I'm just hoping to give these these movies that don't get the love they should. Yeah. And exposing them to to a wider audience. Not that yeah. we have, you know, a wide audience or anything, but you know, at least we're putting our voice. Well, we have 105 there. subscribers now. Oh, that's right. That's and right. We have to pat that, ourselves on the back. That's that's that we actually hit not only at the hundred mark, which <laughs> we're, we're so small. We need subscribers, folks. We need likes. Uh, please do that. But uh, we actually hit 105 uh, this week. So um, I thought that was pretty cool, uh, considering it's just the two kooks here, Mike and Dom. But uh, but yeah, so again, um, thank yeah, you, you guys. If you don't subscribe, the yeah. views help. Just put this video on in front of one of your kids yeah. and let them fall asleep to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and yeah, watch it. I mean, watch, you know, it's it's best if you can watch it through, but if you can stand us. But um, but no, believe me, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate the the fact that people actually uh you know, it's so hard to get likes. People people don't always like actually put themselves out there to to give a like. So the fact that you do we we appreciate it but no i gotta admit i didn't i didn't do likes that much until i started this and realized yeah. that it I, well i've been way, way more conscious of of the likes I, i've 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 been way more conscious of i I'm, I'm a little more reluctant on subscribing unless it's something i know that i'm going to go back to or 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 you know that i'm interested in the content so i understand that i understand why people may may not do it but uh, if you guys at all like movies, I mean, we love movies. We may be, you know, we're just too cool to doing this. <laughs> but, but yeah, but we're, hopefully, you know, as we go along, we're going to talk about, like I said, I really want to, I do want to do the, you know, the Shuttered Room. And that's a movie, um, I think myself, I always loved that. I saw it as a kid, um, very young, and it would always creep me out. That was an early, like, scare the hell out of me movie. But yeah. Um, it's it's less scary to me now but it's still cool well um, well, we'll save it for when we actually do that video yeah. but, but they, it's, a, do, it's a cool movie, the next if movie. yeah if you haven't seen that one uh, i i urge people to see it and when we do the talk on it please watch the watch our our uh, talk on that when we do it <laughs> uh, on, on that note i think yeah. that's a good time to wrap up yep yeah i i i, I really enjoyed our our talk this week, Dom. Uh, you you carried the ball for us on this because oh my god! Well, I mean, it's just that I love I love those first three movies. Well, this this was actually like I said, this was yours uh, because I I was not familiar with this one. I'm glad you introduced me to it. I had a lot of fun watching it, and it actually made me go watch the first one again. And I enjoyed the first one as much or more uh, because I had seen this one. So um, I, you, I think both are they're standalone movies. You could see either one alone. Oh yeah. But but um, so it, it almost doesn't matter which order. But I urge people if you haven't seen the movie and you uh, were all in at all intrigued by what Dom and I talked about, uh, give it a look. It's a good movie, and and so is the first and one. And it's Resolution. easy to find. Yeah, yeah. So Dom, thank you for thank you for bringing me to it. Oh, uh, my pleasure. I mean, again, we're going to keep yeah. sharing movies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's another one is uh, Come to Daddy. I, I've got to, if you haven't seen that one, i got to get you. It's it's weird. It's funny. It's it's just a, but uh, uh, that's another one we're going to do. So there's, so, we've got a lot of movies lined up. Oh, so many. Stuff. People, please stay with us if you would. <laughs> uh, I hope you do subscribe. I hope you leave the likes because, uh, you know, if you... <laughs> You know, if you if you can stand us at all and think, you know, our <laughs> talks are at all interesting, stay with us because uh, we're we've got a lot more coming. So thank you. Well, great talk, Mike. Great talking to you as always. Yep. Yep. And uh, Dom, I uh, I uh, had a great time with you and this was this was cool. So um, see you next week. And indeed, and looking yeah. forward to next week. All right. Take, take care. So, <laughs> you too. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Yep.